Celestial Invitational. My name is D2. With me is Kaldi. We are not the Chinese casters on the screen there. That is Snowkiss in the middle with the uh, two guys flanking here. There, I believe that is uh, Shadowy on the left, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of the players from earlier in the tournament. In any case, uh, he is eliminated. I know that. And uh, for you guys next, we just saw Colento defeat Dog three games to zero, surprisingly. And now, yeah, we have Tom in studio going to be playing against Braros. That is Tom60229. And uh, we will see who's able to come out on top, the man from Taiwan or the man from China. We see his accomplishments in there, able to uh, win the Onog and the Azus Rog there. So very, very, very well done by him. By the way, guys, these, these players have to bring the exact same deck. So we will see uh, how they perform within this time. Looks like we have the Combo Druid the uh, mid-range Paladin and the aggressor, or no, the mid-range Shaman coming out from Tom here. Uh, what do you think about his choice to bring these decks in the first round here? I think it's very noteworthy that he's bringing Shaman in uh, round one. Something like what Colento was doing, but he's also bringing against Druid and, and uh, Paladin, which are kind of considered A-class classes. So he's going halfway, uh, bringing uh, what most people would consider the weakest class, and two of the strongest classes, and I kind of like that idea. Right, right, yeah. Just get the lead with the Druid and the Paladin, and then hopefully you have many chances with the Shaman to take out the victory, and so you're maybe able to just squeak by with that class. Looks like we're going to be looking at Bra Rose's decks next, and he brought Druid, Paladin, and Warlock, so like you said, that really strong combination of Druid and Paladin. This time he has the Secret Paladin, though, not the Midrange Paladin, and finally going to be that Zulok with the No Doctor Boom, instead going to be having the Sea Giant in there like we saw in the group stages uh, just yesterday, actually. So, Bra Rose, you know, he was able to be successful yesterday uh, with the lineups that he had. And like we mentioned before, the two Chinese qualifiers, just like they did when they qualified for this tournament in the first place, saving the Shaman for the final round, wanting to get as many wins under the belt as possible. I mean, each round is also a lot of money here. Uh, all these players are guaranteed $250. If you win, you get... An extra 1250. If you win again, you get an extra 250. So a lot to uh, a lot to win, and but also a lot to lose. So maybe these uh, uh, Chinese players are figuring, okay, I, I could win the first match, but maybe I'm not likely to make the final, so I'll bring the, the Shaman last. Maybe that's one idea. Maybe another idea is, okay, um, I'll try to even it out, give myself a good chance to make it through. It's just depending on on your expectations. But I think very noteworthy is the. Uh, Hellfire in the Sui here for Braros, and that actually might come in handy against a Paladin, but we saw it yesterday, and it did not end up working out for him here. There, uh, Look at the Mulligan. This is something where it's debatable to keep the net juggler. It will be iffy. You absolutely throw away everything else. Tom, spot on keeping the Consecrate. You would actually keep the Consecrate only if you're a Midrange Paladin. You wouldn't keep it if you are a Secret Paladin, because you need to have some aggression going. If you're behind that... that uh, in the game, then you're not looking good at all. But I think, I think he should end up not keeping the juggler. That's, that's at least my opinion on the matter. Right, juggler can be a bit weak if you're going against something like uh, the shielded mini bots. Uh, just going over yesterday's results, Bra Rose in his first match, he had Druid, Rogue, and Warlock, and dropped it to his Dog two games to three. And like he said, that Warlock did not work out for him, so he has yet to record a win with his Zulok, and that's going to be a troublesome spot going forward, potentially, if he uh, runs into some trouble here against Tom. And like you said, it's going to be a Paladin Mirror, uh, obviously going to be Secret Paladin for Bra Rose, and uh, the Midrange Paladin for, Sha for Tom, excuse me. And like you said, the reason why you keep that Consecrate is because you need a way to get back onto the board, and it looks like Bra Rose is going to be taking the board right away, so that, that Consecrate is going to be invaluable, yes, but now he's drawn the second one, so that's going to be lowering the kind of uh, strength of his hand overall. Looks like uh, Bra Rose was able to play out that knife juggler to be able, knowing that it's basically impossible for uh, the, you know, the paladin to be able to deal with something like that. Uh, obviously, no one's really running something like Argent Lens. And uh, in response, Bra Rose is going to be playing out this Noitron to get in the way. Also, going to be playing out that Avenge so that he can, you know, potentially get a good tempo out of that. On the other hand, Tom does pick up the muster for battle. That's actually going to be huge. That's actually going to be huge. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but it's it, we'll, we'll see where these uh, knives run. 
and uh, going to be attacking with his face first. Doesn't want that Noble Sacrifice to come out. Now he realized that it's not, and going to likely be something like Avenge and the uh, Redemption. In fact, he's tested for... He's tested Noble for... Noble Sacrifice, I guess, yeah. He's um, tested but... for the first secret not being Repentance, but he doesn't know the second secret could be Repentance, and uh, he knows it's not Competitive Spirit. So most likely here it's going to be the uh, Redemption and Avenge. I think something noteworthy also is, is uh, I guess, what if he'd gone for the Slimini bot one? But I think the redemption is why he was able to go for that juggler. Uh, but Tom is in a lot of trouble. I mean, does he attack here and give the events away and also give him a, another juggle, another uh, a Neurotron? Yeah, I think I he think, can't attack here. Right, I think you just let it go and just uh, pass it over to your opponent's turn. Just too much power that you're creating right now. I mean, you give back the Divine Shield and you, you know, allow your Knife Juggler to get one more shot as well. And you make your Knife Juggler even bigger, so... Uh, or the opponent's Knife Juggler even bigger. But uh, this is going to be very good for Braro. He's going to be able to clear out a lot of this board... And uh, looks like he's even thinking about that trade onto the Knife Juggler. Uh, the thing is, Braros has a pretty good... Obviously, he has the board lead right now. He even has those two secrets to be able to kind of back him up here. But we see in his hand, he has, you know, Dr. 7 and Dr. 8, but not very good on turn 5 coming up. So if Tom can kind of come back here and Braros has a couple of empty turns, then Tom could definitely bring this back. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, this is... A strong board, but it's not threatening Tom at all. I mean, he can take four damage a few times and be fine. Uh, an important thing to note also is, I guess, when it comes to the secret paladin versus uh, versus midget paladin, that midget paladin just has a, more options. It, it's, you don't have as many dead mm. secrets, like the Avenger right here, you know. Uh, but it's kind of painful to see something like happened last turn where, huh? Okay. Yeah, so, I mean. Here's yeah, what about you? Kill the kill the kill the mini bot. I mean, he wants to get the annoyed from back, doesn't he? Right. Oh, I think that was a mistake. Uh, from bro. Wait, sorry. Explain that reasoning again. I think he wanted to have the annoyed from alive, so he could get it again with uh -huh. redemption. I mean, if we just look at the scenario again, he had the attack the one one into the shield mini bot. He could kill the shield mini bot. Tom has two one ones left, and the annoyed from with redemption. This takes care of that easily, but now hmm. things are the other way around, and, and and Tom can first of all kill a one one, and give Braros a one one back instead of giving Braros a one one with divine shield and taunt. So right. yeah, missed that from Braros here. I mean, yeah. he looks like he is regretting it. He, he did that really really quickly, and just yeah, he's attacking a one one with. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, definitely. It looks like he regretted his decision there and had to kind of make it up on the fly to, you know, alleviate that mistake. And uh, this is this is the trouble with playing Secret Paladin sometimes. Sometimes it's difficult to deal with the secrets, but it's also difficult to kind of predict what your opponent will do to combat your secrets. So sometimes you have the trades that you make to maximize their effect can be pretty difficult. And Braros might be kind of wilting under the pressure here. Uh, also, Tom, I want to you know point out he had a really good play last turn, not immediately going for that consecrate. Looked like it would could be a pretty good consecrate but wanted to develop his board a little bit more before he committed to that and uh, now he actually has a slightly bigger board than last time and Braros was unable to develop anything at all now Tom with a very difficult decision once again does he go for that Sylvanas does he go for the consecration now I feel like he won't commit to the consecration after not doing so or after not committing to last turn maybe we can at least uh, know what, what's gonna happen if he goes to the consecrate the annoyed one would, would uh, spawn again and it ha have, uh, what is it, two health? The Sylvanas, though, I don't know about that. I mean, the muster is perfect here. Yeah, the muster is pretty draw. good here, but uh, we do see that Tom has that Consecrate in hand to be able to deal with this. That's a pretty good option to have in this situation. And, uh, yeah, like you said, the Anoitron will be the first thing to come back, even if there's a Consecrate here, because that was the first minion to be played on the board. So we will see what Tom does here. If he commits the Consecrate now, if he attacks first, actually... That could be something to keep in mind, but looks like he's not going to give... Uh, I think it's going to be re revenge too, isn't this? This uh, Anoitron, I believe. Yeah. Right, going to be avenged. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason why he wanted to go for the Consecrate first, so that this uh, comes back this way. And now he can take care of this with his face and the Sylvanas and make a dude as well. And uh, Braro certainly has a very strong turn with that uh, Dr. Boom next turn, but he'd be facing against... 
facing off against a Sylvanas. And not only that, if even if Tom doesn't steal a Doctor Boom, he has that uh, Elder Peacekeeper in tow. Yeah, Tom now in a commanding lead. I mean, Burrows, he went for the greedy play. He could have killed the Sylvanas, given Tom a 1-1. One -one. It's not as aggressive, but it's it's also not as risky. And, and he basically, he went for the line of play that dies to Consecrate, and Tom had double Consecrate. So. Ooh, what do you think about this not attacking in with the Sylvanas? Seems like it would I think be... it's, 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 it's stronger, stronger, way stronger, yeah. Uh, yeah but, I mean, if, if, if something like this happens, though, I mean, there's the option now. I think uh, Tom can actually just steal the Dr. Boom, probably attack with the weapon, then attack with Sylvanas into the Neutron. Yeah, this is a mistake by though. I mean, Tom... How does he do deal the extra damage to his own Sylvanas? I think this is pretty good. It gets a really good chance of uh, getting the Boombots hitting his Sylvanas so that he can just, you know, get the four damage from there and steal the Dr. Boom. What were you... Uh... I guess there was, the, there was the chance of, you know, both bombs hitting and killing his Sylvanas and giving... Tom right. the four three. I would have just liked to attack in and guaranteed. Oh right, right. Uh, oh, almost, steal on the Sylvanas, almost guaranteed. But it's, yeah. <laughs> almost yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a tough call anyhow, and, and Tom is rewarded here at fifteen health. He's in no danger of dying. And yeah, even has that Aldor. peacekeeper. I mean, and Braro's hand looks pretty uh, pathetic right here. On the other hand, uh, Braro's is going to be able to pick up this uh, Ashbringer, but uh, I mean. In fact, actually, Tom looks like he might not even attack. That could be a kind of a next level play here, whether or not to attack or not. What do you think he should do here? I don't like attacking. Yeah, I think there's no reason to give him the Ashbringer. Uh, just absolutely starve out Braros here. Tom is playing this beautifully. I really respect his play, but it's kind of tough to face a mid-range um, mid uh, Paladin when your opponent has two Consecrates. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the danger, sort of, of not you know, attacking into something that has, you know, been outdoored is that you do allow them to maybe silence it. But in this case, I don't think Braros wants to silence his own minion. Not to mention that typically silence isn't run these kinds of decks. But uh, Braros is going to be able to clear a decent amount of this board using that Consecrate. Also has the Cog Hammer if he wants to use it, though, obviously, it would get rid of his uh, Ashbringer, so that could be pretty painful. Looks like he's not going to go for it. And, uh, you know, Tom, he has a much better hand, obviously, but uh, that Ashbringer being able to swing for five every turn is pretty problematic. He's going to need another Taunt or a heal pretty soon here. I mean, yeah, it seems like Braros is just banking on Tom, uh, uh, on basically drawing a Divine Favor, and then having t Tom draw basically no Taunts or heals whatsoever. And then he has a small chance, but that's so many ifs, and then it's looking like Tom may be running away with this one. Right, yeah, he does have a pretty massive board here. It looks like he does have lethal on board this next turn, so Braros is going to have to put up that cog hammer and get a taunt up, unfortunately for him. Obviously, you don't want to be getting rid of that Ashbring Ashbringer when you can help it, but... Uh... Yeah, looking at that board, exactly 14 damage. So he's going to have to use the Kong Hammer one way or another. In fact, he could still be dead, depending on how these boom bots land. But um, yeah, kind of an awkward situation. You know, 14 health versus 6. I mean, it seems like Bra Rose is so close to lethal here, but uh, it's just so painful to have to replace your weapon. Yeah, there's very... I mean, one of the bombs goes to face and it lights out... Uh, a tough scenario though for Bravo. I mean, he went for the only play that keeps him alive, and that's just what you gotta do sometimes. I don't see a combination of cards that wow, will get him out hands. of this. But so even yeah. if Tom doesn't get lethal here, then he has a lay on hands. I think this is all but over. Braros has nothing to get in the way of Tom from here on out, even if he doesn't get lethal. Does he get lethal, though? That is going he to be enough, well. actually. <laughs> doesn't even need it. Uh, Tom is going to be able to take the game, and now he is up one game to zero in this best of five series. Remind you, everyone, that this is single elimination. You lose and you're out. No more counting game scores. No more worrying about, you know, two threes or one threes. Whoever wins these series is moving on to the semifinals, unlike the group stages. So every single game here is absolutely super important. Yeah, no question about that. I mean, Tom looking very composed, very buff, you know, very ready to be taking this whole series. Whereas Braros is, looks like he's doubting his, his life choices here. Uh, <laughs> really disappointed about the last, about the last game. I mean... You can't be disappointed though with something like this. Uh, I think even here, like people were keeping Mysterious Challenger initially, but now generally people are running uh, Tyrion and Dr. Boom. This is just straight out of the uh, 
out of the uh, Temple Stone Meta snapshot, which you should absolutely check out if you haven't. Uh, but the idea behind this deck here, though, is you have only, uh, I believe, yeah, you only have two Noble Sacrifice double events, and the rest of the secrets you have one of. So the second Mystery Challenge is going to get maybe one secret out of it. So right. when you had the 14 plus secrets, uh, you could be keeping. Or 12 plus secrets, sorry. Uh, you could be keeping a mysterious challenger with a coin, but after you change it up to a, uh, a, a, what would that be, 7 secret? Uh, just put all 14 in there, Kaldi. Just uh, I for seven nice secret, secret trial, just go for it all. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Back here on Skype, but, yeah, um, but I guess if you only have 7 secrets, you generally don't want to keep the... Uh, the mystery challenger because what if you don't have the second one or what if you don't have more sheep because you want to have feel the mini boss you want to have a sort of battle instead yeah definitely uh, that's like you say the danger of keeping that mysterious challenger in hand obviously you know it in a in a vacuum it seems like going coin mysterious challenger into mysterious challenger would be a good play but uh obviously that's not going to be helping out braros too much and like you said there's going to be you know not that many secrets remaining once he does that and uh, having kept that mysterious challenger, now uh, he doesn't have the greatest, you know, set of plays right here. Has you know, cog hammer, which buffs a minion. Has a blessing of kings, which buffs, buff, uh, excuse me, buffs minions. And uh, has that redemption, which is not helpful when all you can do is spawn a hero power. So just gonna go with the cog hammer, and it gets immediately Harrison Jones. So Tom in a commanding lead right now. Something you don't often see when it's the uh, the secret paladin versus the druid. I mean, yeah, Braros just looks devastated here. Uh, I don't know what he could do at this point. This is just as bad as it actually gets, really. He has a bad hand here with the, with the Paladin. On top of that, Tom is drawing like a god. Ooh. I mean, Sylvanas on top of that. Uh, what can he do here, honestly? No, even, even uh, Bashing of Kings yeah. isn't going to cut it. Yeah, this is the thing, right? I mean, having a, something like a shield and mini bot with the redemption is usually pretty good because you don't want to be taking damage, so you have to kill it. But once you kill it, it comes right back and does a lot of damage. But Tom says, I don't care. I'm just going to go face because I'm the aggressor now. You know, question about that. I mean, also, Baros, was he thinking that the shield and mini bot will be killed before it plays the Mysterious Challenger? Because if you're planning on playing the Mysterious Challenger, uh, you won't get the redemption. Right. So you basically lose a secret, unless he's only running one, which is, I think, the more likely scenario. Another idea would be maybe he's trying to get rid of the secret so he can get a better uh, divine favor later on, but... I mean, yeah. this is likely to turn out really badly here. For, I think he uh, was. Browers. I think he was thinking that uh, if, on the off chance, his mis his uh, mini bot gets redempted or redeemed, um, then he will get that extra secret. But he also has a second mysterious challenger in hand, and most likely he's going to be playing that as well. So maybe that's a way he can get the second re uh, redemption out of his hand. Uh, looks like uh, the mysterious challenger is the one to get avenge or get the avenge buff there, and uh, as Tom. Can you make it so that your Sylvanas takes this Mysterious Challenger? Uh, obviously you can swipe and run your Sylvanas straight into it, but that would turn it into a 9-2. And so not the best situation. And uh, well, looks like he is going to go for that. Doesn't want to take too much damage from this Mysterious Challenger. And uh, yeah, not looking too great for Braros here. He goes for the swipe. Um, what does he follow this up with? Innovates out. Is that a Keeper? Yeah, innovate. Uh, looks like yeah, the shredder. shredder. Right. So the shredder does get uh, repentance, but you know one of the better options to get repented if you are uh, the one playing that card, obviously because it's. I mean, it just comes back, right? And the more important thing is that it has two bodies. Bra Rose under so much pressure that he can't even use his second mysterious challenger. Has to go for that consecrate. And as we see the Bone Guard Lieutenant come out of that Shredder, won't even die to this Noble Sacrifice if there's a Hero Power first. And uh, this is looking, again, really bad for Bra Rose. What are the two secrets out right now? I guess Competitive Spirit and uh, the Noble Sacrifice he just played? Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, some luck at luck for Bra Rose. The Conscious Creator was so clutch, it kept him in the game. He's way behind. But, I mean, we also just look at the uh, amount of damage here for Tom. I mean... If he goes, I mean, he has what? What is it? Direct damage, eight direct damage plus six from the uh, feral spirits. So I think I really like his play here of attacking and first getting the three-three tenant. 
Yeah, the, the tree he, ends there. <laughs> that would be crazy yeah, if he had uh, charging feral spirits. I would like that card. But <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, yeah. it's going to be all but over here. I don't think there's any more noble sacrifices. So yeah, Tom King just, just goes straight 7 damage to the face. Has the swipe, also has the force of nature. So yeah, that is going to be it, I believe. Yep, 7 plus 6 is greater than 12. Math confirmed. And Tom is going to take a 2-0 lead in this best of five. Braros is devastated. Look at him in that booth. On the other hand, Tom, cool and collected. Very experienced player, having won two championships already at Lands. Yeah, you can't be putting all this emotion into the game because it will just hurt you. You have to be treating this like just another ladder game. This is just another secret power that you should do it. You know, you know, have to know, okay, I I'm gonna draw that in about one uh, one one game in ten completely dead. This is one of those ten games. I'll just move on. I won't think of this as oh, this is two thousand five hundred dollars on the line. If you start thinking about the money, it's the same thing as in poker. If you think about the money, it's just it just gets in the way. You just have to keep playing and, and not think about the stakes. But I mean, the thing is though, Tom does uh, still have to win with his shaman, and we're seeing the. The uh, I guess the uh, the players here with the quote unquote weaker lineup do better. I mean, we saw Colento win with uh, Rogue and Shaman and Mage, and now Tom has the Shaman as well, and he's two over. But this is not over by any means, though. I mean, Tom can definitely uh, lose three times in a row here with the Shaman, and I think Braros isn't out of this, and he must realize that. But yeah, Totem Golem into Totem uh, into Trog, it's not too bad. I mean. The abuse is just going to punish this, though. Yeah, definitely. And like you say, it's not over until it's over because of the shaman that Tom has in his hand right here, or in his, you know, arsenal. Uh, the only deck that's left. I mean, that's what we talked about coming into this, right? Uh, Tom. He has the two strong decks in the druid and the paladin, and like you know, we expected, they got out of there pretty scot free. Had two pretty easy games, but has to win with the shaman still. And this is not the greatest lineup or the greatest matchup, excuse me, going against this druid. And uh, looks like Braros. Yeah, I would, I would imagine you want to do that trade there because one feral spirit and uh, Tom gets a great trade on your void walker. Yeah, Braros is gonna be the defender here in this game. I mean, as Tom has the lava burst, he has the doomhammer. Doomhammer can be used for trade, but it's not really that efficient. It's okay, I guess, against Sue, but. You know, versus Braros is Mulganis and Braros is Sea Giant and Braros is Dr. Boom. I feel like the longer the game goes, the better it's going to be for Braros. Yeah, exactly. He has the hero power that can sustain his hands, whereas Tom might be running out of cards. I do believe Tom has a bit of a mid rangey deck. Uh, he obviously has those tunnel trucks, but I think. Uh, he obviously we see the zombie chow in there, but uh, I think he has one doom hammer and two fire elementals, as well as an alakir, if I remember if I'm remembering correctly. So not going to be super all in is Tom, but uh, I mean even when this was mid range uh, shaman against the Zulok back in the day, this was a matchup that did favor the Zulok, and uh, since that time Zulok has only gotten stronger. So regardless of what type of shaman or you know what kind of tech cards Tom has put in here, it's probably going to be favoring Braros no matter what. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think about going for the uh, Feral Spirits over the Totem Golem uh, Zombie Chow here? I felt like the Totem Golem Zombie Chow was more appealing because, you know, you could go Ooh. for... Rolls a two, that is very devastating. Yeah, I, I do see what you're saying. Um, he, I think he's maybe thinking about the possibility of having, you know, uh, being able to trade up with that uh, flame tongue totem and also this scenario here where he has the two mana to play that totem golem so ends up working out in the end for him as far as mana wise and uh, next turn he can go for his feral spirit and zombie chow since he is going to be at four mana uh, overloaded for one uh, five and five minus one to four so yeah going to be looking okay for tom here obviously the braro is going to be having the stronger hero power I guess here yeah, what I was saying is if you go for the Totem and Golem from Bichar line, you get that out. You get more power out mm. earlier, and right, you can also right. go for the Fell Spirit after that, because the Taunt isn't really going to be that efficient, but the Sweater is pretty spot on here. Yeah, I think there's also some merit to the Flame Tongue, but to kill the Imkang boss. Yeah, a lot of things that uh, Tom can do here uh, between that, you know, the, the Flame Tongue Totem making his uh, minions. 
bigger and being able to get better trades, but that isn't too mana efficient, unfortunately. Also, like you said, can go for the Shredder, can also go for these Feral Spirits and Zombie Chow and put the Shredder in on the following turn, since he will have four mana if he goes for that double overload. But uh, yeah, Tom with an interesting decision here. He could go for any number of plays in the situation. Uh, obviously on the side of Bra Rose, wanting to get out that Sea Giant as quickly as possible, though Tom does have the answer in that Hex. So yeah, we will see what Tom goes for here. Going to the rope, finally going to play the Shredder, is going to be the most power that he can put on the board. And uh, just going to trade for the 1-1 there, and go with the face uh, for that Totem Golem. That looked pretty perfect to me. Um... I think there's no merit to anything else in this case. Right. Really liking Tom's play today. I feel like he's he's on point here. Uh, guess the mortal coil. It's not going to be the strongest. I feel like you have to go for the sheet jam here. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, he can't possibly. Uh, wait. He can't possibly attack with the uh, the. Uh, yeah, he could, boss. he could have attacked with either the in-game boss or the Honda Creeper to make more means on the board, and then possibly use his Sea Giant and his Mortal Coil on the same turn. Another thing he could have done is actually go for not the Mortal Coil, but a one-drop, and essentially get that on the board for quote-unquote free, because the Sea Giant would cost less in that instance. So, a lot of interesting mechanics with that Sea Giant, obviously. Now, Tom has to Hex here, so that kind of limits the amount of mana he can use, but after the Hex, he is going to be having a bigger board, so looking kind of okay for Tom, but Again, the elephant in the room is that superior hero power for Bra Rose. Yeah, I'm not question about that. I mean, but this looks to be me at least the most exciting game of the day here. Mm -hmm. We have the hex come down. What do you think about the idea, possibly, of going face with both the minions and then hexing afterwards? Yeah, I thought that might be what he's going for, but I suppose that hex could be a bit of a nuisance in the future. Uh, if you have that, you know, little froggy in the way, preventing you from making good trades. So, uh, a bit of a safe play here from Tom, not wanting that Hex to be in the way in the future, because obviously there's a very high chance of these uh, Feral Spirits getting just knocked out on this turn. So, yeah, doesn't want to have to commit later on, just going for the safe play. And I kind of can, what do you think about, I can respect that. What do you think about Owl Implosion here? Owl mm. Implosion. I kind of like that, actually. But it's, it's still, we have to... Be, be a bit mindful now. If you're also four, he may just be going too far. You know, <laughs> He's, you're never gonna run a four. <laughs> Roll a four. This isn't six of leg. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Bra Rose cannot make the four implosion happen again. It's going to be a two, and that's really painful in the situation. He needs all of the luck that he can get down zero and two in this series, but just can't seem to buy a break here. I mean, yeah. If we look at the scenario though. Now, if Tom Bravo can talk really to, can't, can't, if Tom can talk yeah, to the lightning storm here, sorry, sorry for cutting you off. What are you gonna say? No worries, but I feel like you know, Bravo's can't really proc his egg, and what if Tom possibly just goes face here? Yeah, it looks like he is going to go face here. And uh, that's going to be nine hitting Bravo's face, which means he pretty much can't tap anymore. He can tap. Well, if he tap, we if he taps once, we know that he's dead to the fire elemental. But uh, just looking from Braros's point of view, he can only tap once for the rest of this game. So very interesting play by Tom, just putting the pressure on. He also can't clear. I mean, he has six damage, and he will need seven to clear here without. So he will basically need a doomsayer here from the uh, Paldus Vetter, or he is going to be out of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, wait. Are you sure he can't? Yeah he, can't he can't so, yeah. yeah, he can't clear without tapping, you're right. So he's going to tap, which means no matter what he does here, he's going to die. Not even the Doomsayer will save him. And we're going to be seeing another 3-0. I mean, yeah, Tom just dominating here. We see the second time in a row here. The Shaman player pulls it through. And another thing, I mean, Tom, okay, he does... Oh, no. He, he, did, he, did, he did get the, uh, the Shaman out of the way, but he also... Can't use the druid wow. and the paladin now, and that may be efficient here, but yeah. Braros can't even deal with that ancient watchman, and uh, just a simple hero power would have been it for Tom. He's going to take the series three to zero. Our second three zero <laughs> of the day. We had maybe one or two three zeros the entirety of the group stages. Six matches a day over four days. All of them went three ones, three twos, typically three twos. But now we're just having these beatdowns, first by Colento and now by Tom. But uh, maybe, you know, maybe just uh, Group C is too strong. Was that Group C, Tom and Colento? I'm getting my groups mixed it, it up. It was, yeah, yeah. It sure was. But I mean, 
Okay, so we had uh, 24 best of fives in the group stage. Only one of them went three, or those LOEs against Jacia. Uh, but yeah, I mean, most of the games were actually going to 3-2. We had the first four matches yesterday go to 3-2. So, I mean, 3-0, 3-0, that is not what we were expecting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and you can see the looks on the Chinese casters' faces. They are not too happy seeing Braros get immediately eliminated. And uh, yeah, like you said, Colento is going to move on in the first match. And the, the Chinese players obviously love him, but don't know if the same reception can be... well can be expected for Tom being the Taiwanese representative you know sometimes there's some tension there uh, between those two countries so uh, we will see if the Chinese players uh, you know per in particular the qualifier Jaysha or obviously Eloise can move on in the matches to come from here on out uh, we're probably going to be going to a break here we're just kind of piggybacking on the Chinese stream here we will see when they decide to go to that but uh, yeah hopefully we can get some good matches in the future what do you think uh, will, is going to happen between Eloise and Life Coach actually I'll ask you that after the break and uh, we'll see you guys after this